He's never seen it. I've never seen it. I'm not yeah. familiar. Wolver what? <laughs> Wolver what? Wolver what? Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, here he is. How are you, man? Good to see you. Hey, man. How are you? Nice to meet you. Normally, I would wear this shirt, of course. You, you're not a black shirt. You're not a black shirt. I would like to, but oh. this is uh, the sweatshirt that my father wore when he was watching Eddie the Eagle. Fantastic. So it's really. <laughs> it looks perfect. We should have used it for the movie. It's great. Thank you. That's Went amazing. So that's so amazing. This is all, actually wow. older than you, I think, this sweater. It's crazy. Is it? So that's but it like, smells good. It's, it's in it's good, good Nick, too. It looks good fresh. Show. Yeah, it looks fresh. Thank that's you. an unusual thing to remember what you were wearing when Eddie the Eagle. Yeah. 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 You remember stuff like that? No. I can remember an orange jumper I had when I was 10 that I really loved. It had the word zero written there. I thought it was really cool. <laughs> really? Yeah. I remember wearing it to like my 10th birthday thinking about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like sort of orange, with like a it wasn't cool. Remember I was told you I was in search of a hobby. Yeah. When I turned 13, I decided it was going to be t-shirts. <laughs> um, really? So I had so a birthday party and I said to everyone, Give, bring me t-shirts. And so everyone tried to bring a crazy t-shirt and I was so over it by the time I was opening the I, presents. Were you so trying to have like a thing to hang your hat on? Like a, something to do, like, to like something. Like, I, I thought there was something wrong with me. You seen Huey's the guy with all the t-shirts? He's got no, yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know why, I thought t-shirt would be cool. That kid is so cool. Because all my clothes were handy downs from my brother. So ah, that makes sense. Oh, that's quite cute. Oh. As we embark on a new era for sport. It's an opportunity to discover a new kind of athlete. Okay, hands up, that was my fault. Have you seen Eddie the Eagle that times? Did you watch Did the I see games? Yeah. Uh, I watched a bit on TV, I remember a little bit of watching, but I, um, uh, it was 30 years ago. I was 22 years old, and I don't think I was that interested at the time. I think it, in England, uh, in the UK, was, he was kind of a bit of a joke, and we were a little bit embarrassed, you know, because he, he lost, he was the loser. Um, it was only when I came 28 years later and read the script and, and met Eddie, the real Eddie, and, and uh, read his book that I understood that there was a, there was a more interesting story than I'd, I'd realised. For my father and for most of the people watching Eddie the Eagle, he was like kind of a loser. And now he, this, we see this movie and it turns out that he's for the hearts, for the people. He's, yeah, he's, good, he's, good. A, he's a winner. So Yeah, I think that's absolutely it. You know, that's really what I hoped would come out of this whole situation, you know, that um, um, we could we could make a movie. Uh, so many birds. Sorry, I'm just it's aware that this guy is really upset. Do you want to close it? Do you want to shut the door because Let's it's distracting? It. Yeah. Let's shut it. I, I, I can see someone watching see their career like, go up you, in smoke. You look like you're about to have a heart attack, so let's just shut the door. But did you train here? I heard you train in the morning. Did you train here too? Because it's the air is thick here. You, you, you. Well, that time I got up here. He'd been in there for an hour and a half already. What, this morning? Yeah. Oh yeah, we did train this morning, yeah. Oh, I thought mm. you meant when we were making the movie. No. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're, yeah, we trained here this morning. Mm -hmm. We trained, there's like a gym just there, actually. It's a beautiful gym at this lovely hotel, yeah. For as long as I can remember. Champion! It has been my ambition <laughs> to become an Olympian. Eddie, you are not an athlete! Eddie is really, really, you say, well, not good in, 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 in something. Is there anything where someone told you, you are really, really bad at it, please stop, don't do it. I've, I've actually been really lucky in that sense. My family and friends have always been very supportive of anything that really, really, really matters to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's close it completely. That was me, all me, I take all it. It was, was your idea. Oh, sorry. That was my idea. <laughs> yeah, same, I had a lot of support as well. Although when I first became an actor, weirdly, my career kind of took this funny turn to the right, which was musical theatre, and then I did two mus musicals in a row. So for two years I was on stage, and then I struggled to get an audition for film. There was this whole thing in Sydney where it was not cool to be in musicals, and that if you're, a, you're not an actor if you're in musicals, you're an entertainer. Um, so I had to beg, I had to write letters to get an audition. In the press conference, Eddie, the real Eddie, said that he had a trainer which was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. did, did you know that before? Uh, I didn't, actually. I, I heard it only recently. Okay. He started talking about that a, a bit more recently. I was like, well, no, I, did, I didn't know that. If I had known that, maybe I would have made some attempt to 
make that a comedy moment in the film, but, you know, uh, uh, that's just one of the wonderful things about Eddie. The more he speaks, the more extraordinary stories come out every time. Every time he, he says something, you find out something new. And, you know, all that stuff about him jumping off of the off the building, you know, off the first floor and the second floor. I, just, I never heard that before either, but, you know, every time he, he tells another story, it's incredible. He's an amazing man. You're right. I'm never going to go to the Olympics. I'm going to go to the Winter Olympics. You will never be Olympic material. Let's do it. I really need a coat. Eddie is a real character, and your character is a fictional character of a trainer who comes there and helps him, but he isn't sure if he really needs help. Um, no, he's sure he needs help, but he's sure he doesn't, he doesn't want to want give it to, give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you find the tone of that character? You know, that dynamic was something that, we, you know, I think we were both drawn to when we were uh, looking at the script. They're a kind of odd couple. There's one person with endless enthusiasm and gusto and commitment, and then another guy who's very, very reluctant and mm. kind of more cynical. They're mm. a sort of odd couple, and that's kind of the fun of it. I think a lot of the comedy is in that. Yeah. I think what was important was that because we're we're not making a documentary, we're making a fictionalized, fictionalized version of, of Eddie's story about how did he get there. That we have a character that is going to push against Eddie, that is going to make him explain who he is, why he works the way that he works. Otherwise, we have Eddie walking around on his own in lots of snow with some skis, and that's you know not super interesting. But what we did is I created a character, or we created a character that is very much the opposite of Eddie. You know, he's cool, he wears sunglasses, he drinks, he's a womanizer and he stays up late, he's a party guy and Eddie drinks milk and goes to bed early and you know, he's the, they're very much, but that gives us great tension, gives us great comedy, great drama. You do realize the time to start jumping is when you're five or six. What would you know about it anyway? Bronson Peel. 1968 champion. How come I've never heard of him? They kicked him up. He was disrespectful of the sport. Oh. You have a, I would say, when Harry met Sally scene in yes. this, this movie. Uh, how many times did you have to shoot it, actually? Or was it like a one-taker? 23. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. A few times. Three or four, maybe. Five, six, seven. He enjoyed yeah. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy it. On set too, or was fun. it a close set? Open. No, no. No. I, I, I invited people in. I, yeah. I like an audience. <laughs> Very good. We were shooting at Pinewood, we had like stormtroopers coming <laughs> in. And stuff. Yeah, great. The original movie, the first cut, uh, it was like two hours and something, I heard. Uh, how was it for you to like, okay, we have to take this down, take this down? Yeah. And I heard that even a scene with uh, Iris was cut out so yeah had to go so what what uh... it's a really difficult and horrible decision to have to make because i have two hours ten minutes of what i think is the script the film the film that i love and i wanted to make and then of course practical reasons come into it so you have to find compromises and then of course when a film is two hours and ten minutes long it's really thick there's parts of it that are slow and there's parts of it that sort of you know, what I call a cul-de-sac, you know, as a certain story will start going down a road and then it doesn't go anywhere. My producer sort of says to me, take it away, let's see how it works, and, I, uh, and you do it. Um, but it's just, it's, it's unfortunately the nature of, of, uh, of filmmaking. Or maybe we see it on the, on the special. On the extras, maybe you will. How many Wolverine jokes did you do on set, or like every day? Oh, many. I, no. I... He's never seen it. I've never seen it. I'm not yeah. familiar. Wolver what? Yeah, Wolver what? Wolver what? Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton. Yeah. No, I do. I love the movies. I have asked you lots about uh, the experience of shooting it, but not too many Wolver enjoyed. We were too busy laughing. Like he made me laugh so much on set. We were crying. I was crying with laughter every day. We we had a great time. I think the movie kind of you can see that, which is sort of what the movie. The movie is about having a good time. It's it's a. Uh, yeah. In a way, a very uncynical film just uh, leaves you with a smile on your face. Just after a few tips. Give up, there's one for free. <laughs> Could you give me a push, please? A push? Mm. He's a lot higher than I expected it to be. Oh, 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 
most of the time um, after production you take something home. What is like your memory when you're going to think of Eddie the Eagle of m making uh, the movie? Uh, I had a painting done for you, didn't I, Buzz? That painting, I love that painting. Mm. That was a friend, great. A friend of mine did a painting. I didn't get to nick that. That was just, <laughs> that was just given, given to me. And then I um, have that in my house. Uh, and then I have, I have a, I have yeah, a pair of cool. Eddie the Eagle glasses and a clapperboard. Memories, my heart. All alone in the moonlight. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I remember the old. You say you can remember the old days. Because I was beautiful then. Sorry, that's cats. They are like my cats. I was doing lyrics from cats. It was bad. Which song? Memories. Memories. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it the great moment timing for the movie Eddie the Eagle, where you know many movies are about war, horror movies, aliens and stuff? Why is it maybe a great timing for Eddie the Eagle? I think because it allows families to go to the, to the cinema together. I think that's what's really kind of special about it. And like you say, there's, there's plenty of movies about robots and war and explosions and horror and, and things that people find entertaining, I suppose are fantastic, but it's, it's nice to have something that sort of sits away from that, that we can go with our nephews or our brother or our grandmother or something that we could all go and experience together and it comes out it's very clearly a film about being positive it's very clearly a film about believing in yourself Britain's Eddie Edwards you're Eddie the Eagle just fly Eddie's off Getting far the impossible I have here the hardest question in Hollywood uh, I would be happy if you can answer them. Your favorite ice cream flavor? Wow. Rum raisin. Rum raisin? Live rum yeah, raisin. Yeah, I quite like rum raisin. I, I don't mind endorsing a bit of Ben and Jerry's because they're kind of pretty cool ethical company. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty into fish food. Okay. Fudge brownie. If fish favorite food. Favorite song to have Fish food? Is it? Fish food? Yeah. Fish, fish banana. Food. Fish banana food? Fish. Ah. Fish food, it's like, you've got to try fish food okay. when, when you're done with Wolverine. Also, peanut butter cup. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. They're throwing me out. Thank you very oh. much. Good. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Oh, I'm just, I stole your handshake there. Yeah? <laughs> you did. You did. <laughs> Cut my lunch there. <laughs> Take care, mate.